in for the play-by-play, Bob Murphy. Thank you very much, Ralph, and hi, everybody. Final game of the six-game homestand tomorrow night, and that's our in St. Louis. Playing the Cardinals in the opening game of a three-game series. A turnaround series, the Mets come home after the Wednesday game. And next weekend, the Pirates are here for a night game on Friday night, an afternoon game Saturday, and a big doubleheader on Sunday. Tom Seaver's first delivery is taken high by Yvonne de Jesus, ball one. Yvonne de Jesus, the 23-year-old shortstop acquired from the Dodgers. Right-hand hitter batting at 379. Swing at a foul tip, held by John Stearns, one ball and one strike. Dave Kingman at first, Felix Mian at second, Buddy Harrelson at short, Roy Steger playing third. Bruce Beauclair in left, Lee Mazzilli in center, and Ed Cranepool in right field. The 1-1 pitch by Tom Seaver, curve outside and low, two balls, one strike. Tom defeated Chicago 5-3, opening day at Wrigley Field. That's playing their ninth game of the year. Here's the pitch. Fastball down the middle. Two balls and two strikes. Jose Cardinal is the on-deck batter, and Larry Bittner is hitting third. Cubs has a team batting about 285. They've had hot bats. And a foul back on the screen. No play. <laughs> William Zilli has a large group of family and friends attending the game this afternoon. They're all sitting together behind home plate. There must be about 85 of them. Tom Seaver with a two and two count on Ivan De Jesus. And the pitch on the way. Strike three. An off-speed pitch on the outside corner. Seaver changed up to strike out De Jesus. He caught him completely by surprise. One out and nobody on. Jose Cardinal, the veteran outfielder. Off to a slow start at the plate, batting 154. You can bet when the year is over, he'll be around 295 or 300. Cardinal in his sixth year now with the Chicago Cubs, 12-year Major League veteran. Now Seaver into his motion, the pitch to Cardinal. Low and outside, ball one. Peanuts Lowry coaching at third and Alvin Dark coaching first. Let's have the infield and the outfield straight away against right-hand hitter Cardinal. And a towering pop foul that might be playable. Steger comes over right by the visiting dugout. He's under it. He has it. Cardinal fouls out to Roy Steger. Two outs and nobody on. First baseman Larry Bittner will be coming up. And Bittner off to a very fast start. He has 11 hits already. Batting a 379. Larry Bittner acquired last summer from Montreal. Two years ago, he led the Expos in hitting, batting 315. He looks like a good hitter. Bats left-handed. And he hits the ball from line to line. You have to spread your defense out against him. The pitch by Tom Seaver. And a hard slider. He took a half swing. Seaver wants it checked out. The umpire at third is Paul Pryor with a left-hand hitter up. He says no swing. <laughs> the 1-0 delivery. He jammed him. A foul ball coming back upstairs into the mezzanine at Jay Stadium. Lively crowd gathered here this afternoon. Should be a big weekend of baseball next weekend. The Pirates Friday night. That's the first night game this season at Jay Stadium. A day game Saturday and a doubleheader with Pittsburgh on Sunday afternoon, a week from today. Curve inside and low to Bittner. Two balls and a strike. Let's go to California early this season. They go after the next homestead. The 2 1 delivery. Foul ball. He jammed him again. Foul coming right straight back onto the screen. Next weekend, the Mets play the Pirates here at Shea Stadium. Then they have a two-game series with Montreal, and then they will go to California. They open in California and San Diego on April 29th. Much earlier trip to the coast than usual. 2-2 delivery. Fastball just missed the inside corner. 
And we have a full count of three and two on Larry Bittner. Here's the payoff pitch by Seaver. High pop fly into shallow left field. Beauclair, plenty of time, easing in under it. And the side retires. No runs, no hits, none left. In the middle of the first inning, the Chicago Cubs, nothing, and the New York Mets are coming to bat. Did you know that yogurt has been a staple in the diet since biblical times? That's because people know it's good for them. Do you know why it's become so popular in America all of a sudden? The answer is taste. Originally, the tartness was hard to taste. Today, dairy lean yogurt tastes almost like a dessert. Modern methods of adding fruit flavors and sweeteners have made dairy lean yogurt a taste sensation that's pleasing to the taste buds. Chunks of fruit are blended completely through the product from top to bottom. Putting it all together, the whole package adds up to eating enjoyment. Ready to serve, no stirring. It's got to be the fastest lunch in town. And it contains only 1% milk fat. So look for your favorite flavors in the dairy case today. Try some good dairy lean yogurt on your family. They never had it so good. The Chicago pitcher in the game today is 28-year-old Bill Bonham. Bonham got off very impressively, hurling a complete game victory over the Philadelphia Phillies at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia last Monday. Bill Bonham. Bill is starting his fifth season with the Chicago Cubs. Last year was his worst year since 1974. Last year he was 9 and 13. He has a very strong arm, and Herman Franks thinks he's going to do very well. Bill Bonham from Glendale, California. His lifetime record against New York, Bonham has won two and lost five. Big hand for Lee Mazzilli as he leads off. As we mentioned earlier, Lee has quite a following here today. Here's the windup. The pitch to Mazzilli, a swing and a miss strike one. Felix Mead on deck and then Bruce Beauclair. Epson Cubs have played five games already. New York winning three, Chicago two. Low, inside, one ball and one strike. A lot of Major League Baseball action today. And as those scores come in, we'll be passing them along. Mazzilli thought about Bunny. Pulls the bat away at a 10 side and low, two and one. Mazzilli has been working on the drag bunt. He has the best speed on the ball club, and the bunt will be a natural weapon for him to use. The 2-1 delivery, fouled at back upstairs and out of play. Well, we couldn't see it, but that had to be a good play by one of the grandstand outfielders, judging by the reaction of the crowd. It's two balls and two strikes to Lee Mazzilli. Lee batting left-handed against right-hander Bill Bonham. George Mitterwall behind the plate for Chicago. Line drive, base hit the center field for Lee Mazzilli. So Mazzilli opens the first inning with a well-hit liner out over second toward left center. And Felix Mian coming up. Felix batting 258. Bill Bonham, fastball, curveball pitcher. Now Larry Bittner will hold against Bazzilli. Lee has stolen two bases this year. He's running, and the pitch has popped up. So he'll have to get on the brakes, and he doesn't know where the ball is. Now in under the ball is Cardinal, who makes the catch, and Bazzilli gets back to first base. Mazzilli went all the way to second and tagged there. He didn't know where the ball was. Then he realized that the ball had been popped up to left field high enough so that he had plenty of time to get back to first. 
Beyond retired on the pop fly. One down and Briscoe Clare the batter. Was really wasting no time. He was running. That might very well have been a hit and run play. The Cubs are playing Larry Bittner at first, Manny Trio at second, Yvonne De Jesus at short, and Steve Ontiveros at third. Jose Cardinal, Jerry Morales, and Bobby Mercer in the outfield. Now the pitch on the way. He jammed him, but missed inside. One ball, no strikes to Beauclair. Bruce, four for 11, batting 364. And a throw to first by Bill Bonham. Getting back to the bag easily, Lee Mazzilli. Andaveros playing in close at third against Beauclair. Like Mazzilli, he's a threat to bunt. Had a very important bunt single in the game yesterday. Throw to first, not in time. With one out and one on in the game yesterday and the Mets behind, Mazzilli, or rather Beauclair, bunted for a base hit. Kingman then singled to tie it up, and Cranepool delivered the game-winning hit. Here's the pitch on the way. Drive it toward the gap in right center field. Base hit. Mazzilli around second is on his way to third. Beauclair is digging for second. And holding up a third is Mazzilli. He runs through the stop zone and in the score. Mazzilli ran right through the stop zone. But the throw was wide. It was up the line on the home plate side, and he comes in to score. I don't think Mazzilli ever took a look at Tommy Burgess, the third base coach. Burgess was trying to hold Mazzilli up, and Lee ran right through it. As it turned out, he scored easily because the throw was up the line toward third. And the Mets lead by a score of one to nothing. A double and an RBI for Bruce Beauclair. Mazzilli had held up between first and second, thinking the ball might be caught. But it was well hit and over in the gap. Dave Kingman standing in. New York on the scoreboard, leading one to nothing. The pitch to Kingman. And a high fly ball hit the right field. Bobby Mercer moving toward the line. He'll get under it, and he makes the catch. Beauclair tags in second, and he'll go to third after the catch. Now here's Ed Cranebull. He knocked in the winning run in yesterday's victory. Eddie Cranepool hitting 344, two home runs and five RBIs. Dave Kingman, the club leader, with six RBIs. The RBI for Beauclair on his double to right center field, scoring Mazzilli from first, his first RBI of the year. And they're going to walk in Greenpool. Greenpool has really been hurting the Chicago Cubs. And so Herman Franks, the manager, says, let's put him on and pitch instead to John Stearns, a right hand hitter. So Greenpool, who beat the Cubs with a single yesterday, Will this time be intentionally walked? Our time is called. Paul Pryor spotting something on the field. And a small rubber ball that he removes. And ball four is served outside intentionally by Bill Bonham. So Cranepool goes to first. Runners on first and third. One run in, New York leading, one nothing. We're in the first inning. And John Stearns, off to a slow start at bat, five for 25, will stand in now against right-hander Bill Bonham. Beauclair is on third and Crane Pool on first. There are two men away. The infield straight away against Stearns. And the pitch by Bonham. And a line drive caught by the shortstop, De Jesus. Stearns really hitting into hard luck. He slams his helmet against the grass, so you can't blame him. He hit a bullet, but right at the shortstop, Yvonne De Jesus. That retires the side. One run, two hits, and two were left on. 
At the end of one inning, the Mets won and the Cubs nothing. And now from Channel Home Centers. lovely and so true. And homeowners, did you know Channel now offers more than 50,000 different do-it-yourself products? Take it from me, world. If you want to make your home a better place to live, you'll find Channel is the very best partner you can have. There's a star. And when it comes to the star of do-it-yourself home centers, there's only one channel home centers. Tom Seaver pitching for the New York Mets. one nothing New York. We go to the second. The Chicago Cubs will have Bobby Mercer leading off against Tom Seaver. Bobby Mercer off and winging. Batting at 385 with three homers and eight RBIs. He has hit safely in all seven Cub games and had an RBI in all seven games. You can't ask for a better start than that. Somebody splattered the area right behind home plate with a piece of fruit. clear away the debris in the form of a busted of apple. And Bobby Mercer standing in now against Tom Seaver. The outfield is around to right. The pitch on the way. Curve ball taken low. One ball and no strike. Now Seaver is siding in. Down comes the pitch. And the breaking ball just misses. Two balls and no strikes. The Phillies are in Montreal again this afternoon, and it will be Wayne Twitchell pitching against Steve Rogers in the Olympic Stadium. High foul ball wafted back upstairs and out of play. The Expos beat the Phillies yesterday to even that series at a game each. The Pirates are in St. Louis. Jerry Royce and John Denny will pitch. The Pirates with Candelaria and Gossage beat the Cardinals yesterday. Houston playing in Atlanta. That'll be James Rodney Richard and Phil Necro. Now the pitch. Fastball inside of the knees, three and one. The Atlanta Braves behind Andy Messersmith turned back the Astros last night. The Dodgers six and two on the year play in San Francisco. And a drive in the air to right field. Crane pool cutting over. He's under it. Has it for the out. Bobby Mercer lines out to Crane Pool in right field. Cincinnati playing in San Diego. They had 41,000 in San Diego last night, and the Padres beat the Cincinnati Reds. <laughs> the Yankees lost in the ninth inning yesterday in Milwaukee. They resume play there today. Oakland will play at Minnesota. The Blue Jays are in Chicago. That's Bill Singer and Ken Brett. Jerry Morales faces the receiver. And a high foul pop outside third might be playable. Steger going over, and it's going to drop in the crowd. The Red Sox and the Indians playing a doubleheader in Cleveland. They had a big crowd in Cleveland yesterday for the opener. Red Sox spoiled it by defeating Cleveland. Andre Thornton has homered in the third inning of that first game in Cleveland today, so it's Cleveland 1, Boston nothing at the end of four. Reggie Cleveland pitching for Boston. Al Fitzmorris is on the mound for Cleveland. Now a swing and a miss at a curveball. Strike two. Detroit has a day game in Kansas City. Baltimore playing a doubleheader in Texas. It has been raining and raining hard in Texas. Fastball, strike three call. Morales is caught looking. Seaver second strikeout. Two outs, nobody on. Steve Antiveros coming up. 
Baltimore got two in the first inning off Burt Blylevin down in Texas. Jim Palmer, the Oriole pitcher. And rounding out the big day of Major League Baseball, Seattle is in California. Andreveros hitting left-handed, swings and a foul ball. Hit back upstairs, out of play. We are in the second inning with New York ahead 1-0. The Mets scoring on a single by Mazzilli and a double to right center by Bruce Beauclair. Now Seaver over the head, around comes the arm. Curve inside and low, one ball, one strike. Tom Seaver, after his first two games, has won two, lost none. An earned run average of 1.6. Breaking ball. And that missed the inside corner. Two balls and a strike. John Stearns providing the target. Low inside ball three, three and one. <laughs> Mazzilli playing the batter on Deveros is hitting left-handed to hit the ball late. He plays him toward left center field. Now Seaver working behind with a count of three and one. Here's the pitch. Grounded foul into the Mets dugout. No play. Nino Espinosa, who won his second game of the season, sitting at the top of the dugout steps, and he had to get out of the way of that. Nino pitched a very fine baseball game yesterday. His control was impeccable. Seaver checking it out with John Stearns. The 3 2 delivery, too high, ball four, and Seaver has walked on Taveros. Tom did not walk a batter in shutting out the Cardinals opening day here at Shea Stadium. Things are going good on the farm for the New York Mets. John Pasella pitched a no hitter his first start for Jackson, Mississippi in the Texas League. And Jackson Todd, who will probably be seen around here this summer. Got away well by pitching a good ball game for Tidewater as the Tides won their opener. It is high ball, one to middle wall. Todd did not get the decision. It went to Dennis Solari in relief. Dennis Solari came close to making the ball club this past spring. Six foot right hander out of California. Swing and a miss at a high hard one. One ball and one strike. Seaver up in pitching position, turns, and he throws to first. On Tavares on first base, there are two men away. The 1-1 pitch to Mitterwald. Fastball high, 2-1. and one. Craig Swan will oppose the Cardinals in St. Louis tomorrow night. Jerry Kuzman of the second game of the series, and John Matlack in the third. And Tom Seaver will be back to face the Pirates Friday night. And a ground ball stroke to shortstop. Buddy Harrelson up with it. Flips to be on side retire. No runs, no hits, one left. At the end of an inning and a half, the Mets won the Cubs nothing. Shaper Consistently great shaper. From first view to your last. It goes straight to your third. Schaefer consistency starts with country pure water, heading for the Schaefer Brewery in Lehigh Valley. There, Schaefer's Croizen Brew, that's brewing twice. For over 130 years, it's given Schaefer a smooth, crisp, consistently great taste. Schaefer consistency, put it to the test. You'll find your last one tastes as good as your first. Here, here, the same great taste in Schaefer Brewing Company, Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. It will be the bottom third of the batting order facing Bill Bonham in the second inning. The Mets scored a run on Mazzilli's single and a double by Bruce Beauclair. 
Roy Steger to lead off. John Stern sit in hard luck. With runners on first and third, he lined the ball hard to the shortstop, De Jesus. They're not dropping right now for John Stearns. Troy Steger batting 250 on four for 16. One of the four, a home run against the Cubs. And a fastball high, one ball, no strike. Bill Bonham winding, now the pitch on the way. Off speed, pitch a strike call. One ball, one strike. Cubs playing straight away against Roy Steger. And a swing and a miss at a fastball. One ball, two strikes. Bill Bonham out of Glendale, California. Tall right-hander. And he can throw hard. That's a good breaking ball. Pitching one and two. Fastball low outside, two and two. Anytime a hard thrower can get the fastball on the knee-high outside corner, you can just about forget it. It's a pitch you can't handle. And a slow ground ball capped the second base. Many trio sidearms the ball to Larry Bittner, one dot. The day Tom Seaver struck out 19 San Diego Padres. He had absolutely uncanny control with his fastball on that knee-high outside corner. Buddy Harrelson will bat left against Bill Bonham. So far, Buddy's been hitting left-handed against the right-handers. Yeah. And the pitch on the way, right down the middle for a call strike. Buddy experimented with, during spring training, he hit right-handed against a number of right-handed pitchers. And a fastball, strike called in the outside corner. So Bonham quickly has a two-strike advantage on Bud Harrelson. Tom Burgess coaching third, Denny Summers coaching first. Low, outside, one ball, two strikes. An absolutely sensational New York day. Practically no humidity at all. Maybe 10%. Foul ball straight back. Gentle breeze angling across the field from left to right here this afternoon. Enough of it to be of help to a left-hand pull hitter. Pitching one and two. And a ground ball whack to second. Big hop for Manny Trio. And that sidearm toss over to Bittner, two down. And it brings up Tom Seaver. Tom had two RBIs in his last ball game. He drove in two of the four runs as he shut out the St. Louis Cardinals. Good hand for Tom Seaver. Now it is the 11th National League season with the New York Mets. Three times the Cy Young Award winner. Four times a 20-game winner. And a fastball taken, strike one call. Tom will hopefully reach 200 Major League victories this season. Look out. Breaking ball that failed to act up for Bonham. It's way inside. Seaver hitting the dirt. One ball, one strike. Now the 1-1 one -one delivery. And the fastball just off the outside corner. Two and one. After the game today, the Mets are flying to St. Louis. Greg Swan opposes the Cardinals tomorrow night. The 2-1 delivery and a fly ball at the right field. Bobby Mercer drifting back, draws a beat on it, puts it away, side retire. No runs, no hits, none left. At the end of two innings at Shea, the New York Mets won, the Chicago Cubs nothing. <laughs> HFC has tried to bring you the best service possible, to be friendly, fast, and convenient. And we're usually just around the corner. And if there's ever any way we can improve ourselves, just let us know. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Here we come. HFC, an equal opportunity lender.
Gold Finance, where people use our money to get the most out of life. Come on in to HSB. At Household Finance, you may borrow up to $2,500 and choose from a wide variety of repayment loans. For a large or small loan, call HFC in New York, New Jersey, or Connecticut. See your phone book for the Household Finance office nearest you. In the third inning at Shea Stadium, the Chicago Cubs have Manny Trio coming up to lead off against Tom Seaver. And coming up to follow the action for you, Ralph Kainer. Okay, Bob Murphy and hi, everyone. Mets got a run in the first inning. Ringo by Lee Mazzilli and a two-base hit by Bruce Beauclair. On the mound, Tom Seaver. Tom has given up no runs, no hits. He has walked one batter in a 3-2 pitch and is now working to the second baseman, Manny Trio. He's had a big series against the Mets. And Trio goes for a curveball in the first pitch, grounds it to Harrelson at shortstop. Harrelson up with the ball to throw to first base for the out. Trio four for seven before grounding out to Harrelson. Had two doubles in one inning in a game won by the Cubs. That'll bring up the pitcher, Bill Bonham. Bonham has been up three times with one base hit so far this year. This is his second game. Had a complete game victory over Philadelphia's first time out. And the first pitch to Bonham, a fastball, a swing, and strike one. Bonham went to UCLA, University of California at Los Angeles. Tom Seaver went to USC across the tracks, University of Southern California. One strike pitch. Pitch is high, two balls. Pardon me, one ball, one strike. And the one-one pitch by Seaver, a fastball that's fouled back against the screen in the count one-two. Seaver has pitched 40 career shutouts. One of his victories this year is shutout. One ball, two strikes. And Seaver's next pitch, a breaking ball that hangs high in the count two and two. And the next delivery. Fastball swung on and missed, and Seaver has his third strike out of the ball game. Two men away, and the batter coming up is Yvonne de Jesus, the shortstop. Seaver has struck out 15 in 18 and two-thirds innings so far this year. So at that pace, he would be a cinch to again strike out 200 batters in a season. He holds the all-time record of having done it nine consecutive times. And a fastball is high. One ball, no strikes. De Jesus has had a hot streak against the Mets. He's four for ten in this series, batting at 367 for the year. And he swings at a fastball, fouls it back. One ball, one strike. De Jesus has hit in all seven of the Cub games. He has had 11 base hits. Right hand hitting shortstop acquired from the Dodgers, the LA Dodgers. 1 1 pitch by Seaver. Fastball, it rocks De Jesus back. Two balls, one strike. In 18 and two thirds innings, Seaver has struck out 15, walked two. And he tries a breaking ball, a check on the swing. One appeal by Stearns, the catcher of the Mets, for the first race front umpire to make a ruling. He said, no, he did not swing. So they counted three and one. And the three one pitch on the way. Fastball too high, and Seaver has walked his second man. Runner on first base. Mets leading by a score of one nothing. One man out. We're in the top half of the third inning. That will bring up Jose Cardinal. Cardinal fouled out his first time up. Cardinal batting 148. He's had four hits and 27 times up. Seaver with a lob throw to first base. 
Day Jesus is a good base runner. So far this year, though, he has no stolen bases and has been thrown out twice. Again, Seaver over to first base and Day Jesus back with no difficulty. In the minor leagues, Day Jesus had 31 stolen bases at Albuquerque in the Pacific Coast League last year. And a pitch out. But nothing on. The pitch way outside and high. Ball one. Cubs have the time run at first base. And there goes the runner again. A pitch out to throw by Stearns in plenty of time. And Day Seuss is out. As Harrelson takes the throw. And the Mets pitching out twice in a row. And it worked. No run. No hit to walk and no one left on base. And the score at the end of two and a half innings. The Mets won. The Cubs nothing. Well, the 1977 Mets yearbook is available now at Chase Stadium and by mail. The Mets yearbook is still baseball's best bargain, and it makes a great gift. For the price of only $1, $1.25 by mail, you receive your handsome 64-page copy. Of course, this year's publication contains color photos, records, and biographies of all the Mets, as well as a two-page fold-out team picture and spreads on the 1976 All-Stars, last season's Old Timers Day at Shea, and a calendar of extra special attractions. Also, there are some new special features we're sure you'll enjoy, such as a glance back at the 15 years of Mets history, a baby picture quiz, and a crossword puzzle. In addition, there's a variety of statistics for you numbers, Bob. So plan to pick up a copy when you visit Shea, or better yet, order yours now by mail. Simply send a check or money order in the amount of $1.25 to Mets Yearbook, Box 10, Flushing, New York, 11352. That's Mets Yearbook, Box 10, Flushing, New York, 11352. Be sure to add to or begin your collection of Mets Yearbooks with the new 1977 edition. Now to the bottom half of the third. The Mets leading by a score of one nothing, and Lee Mazzilli to lead off. Mazzilli singled the center field his first time up, and later on scored on a double by Bruce Beauclair. The Mets leading one nothing. Mazzilli batting for the second time. He has had six base hits so far this year. One for seven, two for seven in this series, and he takes a fastball high. It's ball one. Bill Bonham working for the Cubs. He has one one lost none. This is his second start of the year. And the right-handers, 1-0 pitch. Change up, run it out towards second. It looks like a good one. Mazzilli to first base, and he is safe. Manny Trio made it close, also oh close at first base. As he, from a very shallow position, came in to field the ball on the grass part of the infield. He underhanded the ball to the first baseman. Larry Bittner, but Mazzilli beat the play, and he has his second into the ball game. That was a perfect bunt by Lee Mazzilli, and they almost turned it into an out. So the Mets have a runner on with Felix Beyond coming up. Beyond fought out the left field on a hit and run play his first time up. Felix hitting 250. Go to first base, Mazzilli back. It was a toss throw. Beyond choking up on that bat, leaning over the plate. And again, a throw to first base. Again, Mazzilli back easily. Mazzilli has had two stolen bases in three attempts. Again, Bonham sets up. And the pitch. Beyond takes a fastball inside, ball one. Middlewall, the catcher, putting the signs down. Now Bonham ready. And he goes over to first base again. Zilli back easily. Lee has had short lead. Now again, Bonham ready, and here's the pitch. 
It is grounded out toward second base. Trio fields the ball, has no play for the force play on Mazzilli and throws to first base in time for the out there. So Mazzilli moving in the scoring position on the ground out by Felix Beyond, and the batter coming up is Bruce Beauclair, who doubled in the run his first time up. Bruce has had five hits and 12 times up, hitting 417. Double to right center field to score Mazzilli all the way from first in the first inning. And the first pitch to Beauclair is swung on. It's fouled back on the third base stands, back into the stands, out of play. Beauclair in the series has been up five times with two hits. Left hand batter played straight away by the Cubs. And Bonham's next pitch is second high. Fastball. One ball and one strike. Last year, Bonham won nine, lost 13. Lifetime against the Mets, he's won two and lost five. Bottom taking too much time, so Beauclair asked for time and stepped out of the batter's box. Now he gets back in. Bottom wants another roll to the side. And now Bottom calling his catcher out. And they're trying to work out their inability to communicate by sign language. The Mets have won 135 games from the Cubs. Uh, Lifetime record, and they have lost 139. Now Bonham set to go as time is back in and the pitch. It is fouled back out of play. Mets have the best amount of wins against any single club since they've been in baseball dating back to 1962 against the Cubs, they are almost to the 500 mark. 135 to 139 losses. One ball, two strikes. And the next pitch is swung on a miss, and Beauclair struck out. As he missed the ball, he went right down to the ground. A hard swing. So with two men out, the batter will now be Dave Kingman. Kingman flat out to right field his first time up. Dave batting 333 with 11 base hits. He has two home runs and six runs batted in. Bonham strikeout is first in the game. He has walked one. And the first pitch to Kingman, a fastball that's inside around the letters. It's ball one. don't put the shift on against him when they keep the second baseman on the second base side although he shifted toward the bag they had used the shift against Kingman in Chicago at Wrigley Field next pitch to Kingman is inside again this time down around the belt and he counted two balls and no strikes Kingman three for nine in this series with one home run And Monum taking too much time, so Kingman asks for time. Sort of gets out of the box and then right back in. Time is back in and the 2 0 pitch. Kingman has a hard swing at a fastball. Foul tips it into the glove of the catcher, George Minerwald. Kingman now takes a practice swing and gets right back into the batter's box. Two balls, one strike. And Bonham's next pitch. Fastball again inside. So Bonham has gone to all.
Smith. Fastball again inside. So Bonham has gone to all fastballs, and he's been trying to work Kingman in tight with his fastball. Three balls, one strike. Kingman stands a fairly good distance from the plate, but he has that long reach, so he covers the outside with that extension. Next pitch is it to deep left field. Going back to center fielder Morales. He's to the wall and is going, going goodbye. against the Chicago Cubs. His first two were against Mike Kruko, and now his third against Bill Bonham, and the Mets are leading by a score of three to nothing. High fly ball over the 371 mark. And the first pitch to Ed Cranepool, the next batter, is swung on and fouled back. England now with three home runs. That ties him for the National League lead. And he has picked up his seventh and eighth runs batted in. And the next pitch to Cranepool is too low. And the count at one ball and one strike. Bill Bonham tried to use smoke against Kingman. All fastballs. And Kingman deposited the last fastball over the left center field fence. Next pitch to Cranepool, a breaking ball. It's low. And the count at two balls and one strike. Kingman hit six home runs against the Cubs last year. All of Wrigley Field. A 2-1 pitch. Change up, a swing and a miss, 2-2. Two and two. Kingman was born in Chicago. So I'm sure he gets some extra added thrill out of the fact that he has hit the Cubs well. The 2-2 two -two pitch. It is low and inside, and that puts the count at full, 3-2. and two. On deck batter for the Mets. John Stearns. And the 3-2 pitch hit back to the middle off of the glove of the pitcher Bill Bonham. It's fielded by the second baseman Manny Creel. The underhand to first base with the throw pulled. The first base went off the bag. It'll be a base hit. So Cranepool, who was hitting at 344, picked up another base hit. He was walked intentionally his first time up. And that'll bring up John Stearns. lined out to the shortstop his first time up. John batting 192. Cranepool not being held on at first base. And the first pitch to Stearns, a fastball inside a ball. John Stearns, a right-hand batter in the batter's box. Mets leading 3-0. Two men out, bottom half of the third. And the next pitch, a changeup that is too low on the count at two balls and no strike. Bittner now has been pulled in to hold against Cranepool, the runner at first base. Ed had a stolen base against the Cubs at Wrigley Field. Next pitch, again low, and the count at three balls and no strike. Cubs has some action going in the bullpen. Steve Renko, a right-hander, throwing in the bullpen for the Cubs. And at 3-0, the pitch to Stearns in there, a call strike. Stearns was on his way to first base. Three balls, one strike. And he started off with Lee Mazzulli, running for a base hit. And with two men out, Dave Kingman hit a home run over the left center field fence. So the first base crane pull back easily. Bonham ready, and the pitch to Stearns on the outside corner, just above the knees. Strike two call. So now Cranepool will be running with the pitch. 3-2 count, two men out. Bittner still holding against the runner on first base. Cranepool goes, and the pitch is fouled back out of play.
Mets won the series against the Cubs at Wrigley Field, two games to one, and trying here to win this ball game to make it two to one in this series. Runner goes again. The 3-2 pitch is fouled back out of play. So once again, Crane pulled back to first base. Bottom has won 44 Major League games. He has lost 57. And here's the 3-2 pitch again, and a high fly ball hit out the deep left field, going back to the warning track. Jose Cardinal, he waits for it, and he makes a catch in front of the fence, about nine feet or so, right on the warning track to retire the side. In the inning, two runs on three hits. Nowhere is one man left. And the score at the end of three, the Mets three. The Cubs nothing. My daughter Amy has a problem. As much as she wanted to play with the other children, they called her stupid and picked on her until she cried. Hi, Mommy. Hi, Amy. But when I look at that face now, I can see what being part of a special program in school means to her. She's part of something. She's beginning to like herself. In Connecticut, whether your child has a physical, mental, or emotional problem, there is help. Over 70,000 children are already being served. If you feel your child needs special education services, call Project Child Find toll-free at 1-800-842-8678. That's 1-800-842-8678. Mommy, Mommy, my friend Mary's coming home to do her homework with me. Child Find is funded by the Bureau of Education for the Handicapped, U.S. Office of Education. We're going now to the top of the fourth inning. The Mets leading 3 nothing, and we pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. In 1937, who hit 370, drove in 112 runs, and slept with his rubber duck and teddy bear? Find out by listening to me in Jim Lowe's New York, weekday evenings after the game on WNEW New York. Ralph Conner, along with Bob Murphy and Lindsey Nelson from Shea Stadium. The Mets leading 3-0. They have three runs on five hits. The Cubs coming up here in the top of the fourth. They have no runs and no hits. And it will be Jose Cardinal to lead off. Cardinal fouled out his first time up. Seaver has struck out three. He has walked two. Cardinal, a right-hand batter, hitting 148. And Seaver's first pitch, it is taken low, a breaking ball for ball one. Cardinal, a lifetime batting average of 277. So he is considerably below his lifetime mark. 1 0 pitch to Cardinal again, the curveball, and this time it's in the strike zone. One ball, one strike. It'll be Jose Cardinal, Larry Bittner, a left hand batter, and Bobby Mercer, a left hand batter, for Seaver here in the fourth inning. Now Cardinal steps out of the batter's box. Cubs made Cardinal cut his hair. He uh, had one of the biggest afros that you have seen and has been trimmed down somewhat. Cardinal did not like the idea. High foul ball hit back over toward the Met dugout into the stands out of play. So the count now at one ball and two strikes. Bob Kennedy, the general manager of the Chicago Cubs, new this year, outstanding ball player, and now general manager of the Cubs. Bob said, I want my players with haircuts. And Seavers 1-2 pitch hit in the air to shallow right center field. Meon going back. Crane pool coming up. Meon makes the call and the cut. And Cardinal is out. Cardinal now is 0 for 10 in this series. That'll bring up Larry Bittner, who has nine hits so far this year. In the series, Bittner has had four for 10. And coming into this ballgame, he was hitting 429. 
That was against the Mets, against the Philadelphia Phillies and the New York Mets. Bittner batting at 367, left-hand batter. And the first pitch hit to Kingman at first base. He goes to one knee as he gets in front of the ball, catches it, and then comes up, goes to the back for the out. Two men away. That will bring up Bobby Mercer. Mercer lined out to the right fielder Ed Crane pulled his first time up. Mercer hitting 370. He has hit in all seven games that he has played in, not including this one. Mets leading by a score of 3 0. Mercer asking for time as he steps out of the batter's box. In this series, Mercer has two hits and eight times up. One of the hits a home run. Now he's back in the batter's box, and the first pitch is it in the air to right field. Crane pulled back on the warning track, putting the glasses down against the fence. He jumps up, and he takes it off the top of the wall. And that ball might have been a home run. Crane pulled jumping high in the air, one-handing the ball right off the top. And that retires the side. In the inning, no runs, no hits, no errors. A spectacular catch by Crane Poole. No one left on in the score at the end of three and a half innings. The Mets three, the Cubs nothing. I want mileage in a truck. I want power in a truck. Mileage in a truck. Power in a truck. Mileage in a truck. Power in a truck. Mileage in a truck. Power in a truck. Mileage. Power. Mileage. Power. Toyota does the impossible. Toyota trucks combine great Toyota gas mileage with powerful 2.2 liter engines to give you everything you want in a truck. Mileage and power. 34 highway miles per gallon, 24 cities. These EPA ratings are estimates for standard transmissions. The actual mileage you get may vary. And you get that great Toyota performance in long beds, standard beds, sport trucks. If you can find a better built truck than Toyota, buy it. I got mileage in a truck. I got power in a truck. We got Toyota. It's the bottom of the fourth inning. The Mets leading by a score of 3 0, and their leadoff batter will be Roy Steger. Mets got a run in the first, driven in by Beauclair after a single by Lee Mazzilli. Beauclair doubled in the right center field and then picked up two more runs in the third after a bunt single by Lee Mazzilli, a two run home run by Dave Kingman. First pitch to Steger is low, it's ball one. Bill Bottom working for the Cubs. Bottom has given up five base hits. Pitch back to Steger, half swing at a changeup, and the count one ball, one strike. Steger on a changeup grounded out to the second baseman, Manny Trio, his first time up. And the right hander's next pitch, a fastball, it's in the air to shallow right field. Bobby Mercer going to his left side, and he makes the catch. One away, and the batter will be the shortstop, Bud Harrelson. Bud grounded out to the second baseman, Manny Trio, his first time up. But hitting 160, he has had four hits, been up 25 times. And Bonham's first delivery, low and inside. Pitch back to Harrelson, fastball outside, two balls, no strikes. At the end of three and a half, Montreal one, Philadelphia nothing. Wayne Twitchell, a starting pitcher for the Phillies. Steve Roger go Rogers going for Montreal. Harrelson takes the call strike. Two balls and one strike. The end of two and a half. Pittsburgh two, St. Louis one. Jerry Royce against John Denny. Simmons a home run in the second. There's a fly ball hit to deep center field, fairly deep center field. Morales goes back, turns, and makes the catch. So Harrelson out to the center fielder, Jerry Morales, two men away, and that'll bring up Tom Seaver. <laughs> now, 
the end of two, Houston nothing, Atlanta nothing. J.R. Richard pitching for Houston. Bill Nico going for Atlanta. Later on, the Dodgers at San Francisco, Cincinnati at San Diego. Seaver flat out to the right fielder's first time up, and he looks at the first pitch, it's low. One ball, no strikes. The 1-0 pitch. Hit out the left center field. Morales with a good job gets over to it and he makes the catch. And the side retired in order. And the score at the end of four as Bob Murphy comes back in for the play-by-play. -play. The Mets three, the Cubs nothing. Boy, there's one sure sign that spring is here and summer is on the way. It's a dollar sign. Come on, man. The fifth inning at Shea Stadium, Chicago coming up against Tom Seaver. Jerry Morales hitting fifth with the order will lead it off. Beautiful day and a good crowd here at Shea on this marvelous Sunday afternoon. Mets are back home next weekend, a four-game weekend series against the Pirates. The first night game at Shea this season, the Mets and Pirates Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and a Sunday doubleheader. In comes the pitch to Morales and a curve to start him off, low and away, ball one. The infield straight away, the outfield straight away against Morales. Fastball high and tight, ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Tom has walked two and struck out three. Now Stearns providing him the target and the pitch. Ground ball bounced over the mound. Moving for it quickly beyond the hurried throw. He's out. One away. Ball bounced over Seaver's head. Fielded in front of second by Miyai. With one away, Steve Ontiveros, the third baseman, bats for the second time. He drew one of the two walks issued by Tom Seaver when he came to bat in the second inning. Ontiveros, former San Francisco Giant. Team with Bobby Mercer in the Bill Madlock trade. The pitch to Antiveros hitting left-handed, a strike on the outside corner. The Yankees and the Brewers, no score after two. Doc Ellis and Bill Travers pitching. Swing and a miss at a curveball. The White Sox won, the Toronto Blue Jays nothing, and the third, that's Bill Singer and Ken Brett. Boston two, Cleveland one after six innings. First game of a doubleheader in Cleveland. Reggie Cleveland against Al Fitzmorris. The two-strike pitch, low outside. Kansas City four, Detroit three in the second inning. Dave Roberts and Andy Hassler pitching. And a fastball off the outside corner. That just missed. Two balls and two strikes. A home run by designated hitter Rusty Stubb. Baltimore two and Texas nothing in the fourth inning in Texas. Jim Palmer and Bert Blylevin. And a line drive into right field. Cranepool coming in, coming in. He dives. They say he trapped the ball, and it's a base hit. A base hit. Cranepool made a beautiful play. Made a head first dive. Had it in his glove, but it was trapped. And there is the first hit of the game off Tom Seaver. Seaver had not given up a base hit. That ball was not hit hard by Ontiveros. It was blooped into right field, and Crane Poole gave it all he could possibly give it. So a single to right by Ontiveros, the first Chicago Cub base hit, and now here is George Mitterwald. The pitch to Mitterwald is low ball one. One out and one on, top of the fifth inning, three nothing New York. Seaver makes the one second stop, delivers fastball, a strike call, one ball and one strike. Let's have the infield at double point up. The outfield is straight away. Dave Kingman playing first base and holding against the base runner Steve Antivero. Now the 1-1 delivery, swing out of this. Fastball, letter high, one ball, two strikes. 
Hornets are flying to St. Louis after the game today. Now Seavers set around comes the arm swing out of miss. He struck him out. That is number four for Tom Seaver. Two men away, second baseman Manny Trio comes to hit. Willie Hernandez and Steve Rinko are throwing in the Chicago Cup bullpen. We'll be going to the sixth inning. The next time the Cubs come to bat. And right now they have their number eight hitter at the plate. So if Manny Trio gets a base hit, we might see a pinch hitter. Although it's very early in the ball game. Low outside, ball one. Manny Trio was thrown out by Buddy Harrelson his first time up. And Trio is hitting 346. Seaver kicks the leg high. Around comes the arm, and a ground ball is short. Buddy Harrelson grabs the throws to be on. Force play is second for the third out. No runs, one hit, one left. We've come ha halfway at the end of four and a half. The Mets three and the Cubs nothing. Schaefer Consistency starts with Country Pure Water heading for the Schaefer Brewery in Lehigh Valley. Where Schaefer's Croison Brew, that's brewing twice. For over 130 years, it's given Schaefer a smooth, crisp, consistently great taste. Schaefer Consistency, put it to the test. You'll find your last one tastes as good as your first. Beer after beer, the same taste Schaefer Brewing Company, Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. Lee Mazzilli will bat against Bill Bonham in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Mazzilli, off to quite an afternoon, has singled the left center, and he scored all the way from first base on the double by Beauclair. And in the third inning, he beat out a drag bunt for a base hit and came in to score on Dave Kingman's third home run of the year. New York three runs on five hits, Chicago no runs, and one hit. Now Lee Mazzilli. Lee will hit left-handed against Bill Bonham. The Mets have not seen a left-handed starting pitcher so far this year. They will catch Pete Falcone in St. Louis. It's high and away, ball one. They've seen Ramon Hernandez and Willie Hernandez from the bullpen, but a left-hander has not started against them. The 1-0 delivery, a change of pace that's in for a call strike, one and one. Felix Bion on deck, and then Bruce Beauclair. Now bottom into his wind up the pitch. Fastball high, two and one. We have a beautiful day here in New York. The two one pitch. And a strike called again. He took a little bit off and the count is two and two. And the Mets are headed for St. Louis following the game today and they say they're having a heat wave out there. The two two delivery, high pop foul behind third on Tavares moving forward down the line and foul ground and he makes a one hand grab. So Mazzilli has fouled out to Steve on Tavares. With one away and nobody on Felix Mian to bat for the third time. Mian has fly to left and rolled out to second. Felix is usually a slow starter. Beyond right now hitting a 242. A lifetime 282 hitter. For Felix, this is the beginning of his 10th full year in the National League. 
The pitch by Bonham. Fastball misses the outside edge of the plate. One ball, no strikes. Bruce Beauclair batting third in the order, waiting on deck. And if somebody gets on board, Kingman would come up. And our bronzer hit down to third. Antiveros grabs the short hop. Pegs on to Bittner at first, two men away. Two outs and nobody on. Bruce Beauclair doubled home Liam Mazzilli in the first inning. And then Bruce was struck out in the third. Beauclair. On shortens up at third, playing even with the bag and wide of the line. Beauclair is a threat to bunt. In comes the pitch. Fastball, strike call to the inside corner. And Manny Trio has shortened up a stride at second against the speed of Beauclair. He doesn't have Mazzilli type speed, but he does run well. Breaking ball, a strike on the inside corner. So Bill Bonham quickly establishing a two strike advantage to Bruce Beauclair. The two strike delivery, strike three called, a fastball on the inside corner. And Beauclair never got the bat off his shoulder. Second strikeout for Bill Bonham. No runs, no hits, none left. At the end of five innings at Shea Stadium, the New York Mets three, the Chicago Cubs nothing. That's how life begins. With a cry of hope, 77,000 babies a year start their lives in voluntary hospitals of the United Hospital Fund. For newborns, their parents and grandparents, the voluntary hospital is the foundation for their well-being. With community health programs, disease prevention, and home health care, the hospital adds to a neighborhood's strength. Through its training of health personnel, it contributes to a community's economic stability. Daily, hourly, new techniques are being developed for better health care and speedier recovery for you. The Voluntary Hospital is your community hospital, a non-profit hospital. Give your support through the annual United Hospital Fund campaign. Please be as generous as you can. A check to the United Hospital Fund campaign is an investment in your own well-being. Send your contribution to the United Hospital Fund, 3 East 54th Street, New York, New York, 10022. Thank you. The ground crew has been out to manicure the infield for the last four innings of the ball game. Herman Franks is calling on Joe Wallace, left-handed batting outfielder, to hit for Bill Bonham. There was a time when Joe Wallace spoiled a no-hitter for Tom Seaver. So Bill Bonham is through for the afternoon. He pitched five innings. Gave up three runs, allowed five hits. Bonham issued one walk. That was an intentional walk to Ed Cranville, and he struck out two. So Wallace played a great deal for the Chicago Cubs last season when they moved Rick Mundy to first base and let Wallace take over center field. Wallace, a left-hand hitter. He has been to bat only twice so far this year and is 0 for 2. We will have a new hurler in the game in the sixth for Chicago. I believe it will be Steve Rinko. And here is the announcement for Joe Wallace. Let's have a new public address announcer this season, Jack Franchetti. Seaver now into his windup and the pitch to Joe Wallace taken high. One ball, no strikes. Nobody on, nobody out. Top of the sixth inning, three nothing New York. The 1 0 delivery, swing and a foul straight back. One ball, one strike. The Chicago Cubs are going home after the game today. They will open a nine-game homestand tomorrow afternoon against Philadelphia. Let's go away for three and then come home. Foul ball back, back upstairs into the mezzanine. No play. 
Now they have switched to Jim Todd in the Chicago Cub bullpen. Might be that Rinko is warmed up and ready, or perhaps Herman Franks is switching. The one-two delivery. Look out. Way inside. He made him jump rope to get out of the way. Well, today's baseball quiz is on the message board for the entertainment of the crowd here at Shea. So here is the head scratcher, who was the last big league pitcher to strike out four batters in one inning. Well, if you have the answer to that, you go right to the front of the class. The 2-2 delivery. High ball three. Seaver is three and two on the pinch hitter, Joe Wallace. Secret to winning for a pitcher has always been to get that first hitter out in an inning. The 3 2 delivery. Foul ball straight back. Three and two on Joe Wallace. Mazzilli plays him a couple of steps to left center. Lee has not had a put out in center field so far today. And a choke check swing bouncer right back to the mound. Easy play for Tom Seaver. He fooled the batter, Joe Wallace, and gets him on an easy tap back to the mound. Seaver has now retired the first batter in each of the six innings. Yvonne De Jesus has been struck out. He reached on a walk, but he was caught stealing. Stearns made a powerful throw to Buddy Harrelson. Curveball, a strike call. One out and nobody on at the top of the sixth inning. And Mazzilli playing him to right center. So that Seaver fastball, they do not play many hitters to pull him. So Mazzilli is over to right center against right hand hitter Yvonne De Jesus. One ball, one strike. And the pitch. High fly ball to right field. Eddie Cranepool has plenty of time. He holds the glove up to shield the sun. Near the line, he puts it away for the out. There are two men away, and Jose Cardinal will bet. Cardinal has fouled out to Roy Steger and popped up to Felix Beyond. Right hand batter, Jose Cardinal. And the pitch on the way. Curve hit hard on the ground. A third stagger up with it. The long throw, perfect. Side retired. Another one, two, three inning for Tom Seaver. No runs, no hits, none left. At the end of five and a half innings, New York three, Chicago nothing. If you're like most buyers of regular gasoline, you probably think unleaded gasoline just don't perform. Sure, unleaded gives you a nice, clean engine, but it just doesn't have the pep of your regular. Or for that matter, the low price. Well, you regular buyers are in for a little surprise. <laughs> Getty Unleaded Regular. Getty's unleaded gasoline has a high enough octane to be classified as regular. Most unleaded don't. Yet Getty Unleaded Regular actually sells for less per gallon than most other major unleaded. So if you want the octane performance of regular, plus the clean running smoothness of unleaded, and you want to pay less, you want Getty Unleaded Regular. Getty. Once again, we've got what's best for your car. Chicago pitcher will be right-hander Jim Todd, reacquired from the Oakland A's in a swap. His third relief assignment against the New York Mets in this young season. In Chicago, in the middle game of the series, he was the losing pitcher, a game won by New York 8-6 on Torrey's pinch double in the ninth. Cardinal comes out of the ball game since he made the last out. Joe Wallace stays in the game and will play center field. This means Jim Todd is batting second in the order. So Todd is batting second. Cardinal has come out. Joe Wallace. 
Joe Wallace in center field and Jerry Morales is now playing left field. David Kingman to lead off in the last of the sixth inning. He swung and hit a mighty fly to deep left center field that went over the fence for his third home run of the year. It came with a man on in the third inning. And the pitch by Jim Todd inside ball one. Jim Todd was with the Cubs in their organization for three years before being traded to Oakland. With Oakland in the last two and then traded back to Chicago. The 1-0 pitch. Look out. Kingman is hit by a pitch ball. Kingman spun away from the plate and caught him between the shoulder blades in the back. Well, Dave Kingman walking slow down to first base. Dave appears to be all right. Crane Poole has drawn an intentional walk and reached on a base hit. David was spinning away from that, and I believe it caught him in the back between the shoulder blades. The outfield is around to right as Crane Poole cocks the bat and waits. Will pass ball off the outside corner, ball one. New York leading three to nothing here at the home sixth inning. Bittner holds against the runner at a fastball wide ball two. Todd trying to keep the ball out away from Crane Poole so that he can't pull it to right field. Left hand hitters have the wind here this afternoon. It's not very strong, but it could be of some help. And the pitch on the way, ball three is high. Now Cranepool will check it out with Coach Tom Burgess at third to see whether or not Joe Frazier is going to let him go on this 3-0 delivery. He might very well be swinging away. Here's the stretch by Todd, the pitch. Nope, he's taking, and it's right in there for a call strike. So it's 3-1. and one. John Stearns will be the next hitter, and then Roy Steger. Big Jim Todd, right-hander on a relief. There goes Kingman at a towering pop fly in the very short right field. Coming in is Wallace, the center fielder, in shallow right center. He makes the grab. So with Kingman running, Cranepool flies up. One out and one on. John Stearns coming up. He's hitting hard luck here today. Stearns lined out hard to Yvonne de Jesus. And he hit a fly ball right to the left field fence to the stunt. It's thrown to John Stearns outside and low. Bittner holding against Dave Kingman. Dave likes to try to steal bases. And the pitch on the way off the inside corner. It's ball two, two balls, and no strikes to Stearns. New York three runs on five hits. Chicago no runs on one hit. Cubs have the infield, a double play depth, the outfield straight away. And a ground ball hit down to third. Might be a double play on DeVarrell's to second. Trio on the first double play, and the side retires. So the Cubs go around the infield for the double play. No runs, no hits, and none left. Lindsey Nelson will join you for the play-by-play -play in just a moment. At the end of six innings, the score of the New York Mets three, and the Chicago Cubs nothing. I've got so many old bills, I can't even afford to have spring fever. Come on in. Come on in. If bills are getting you down, come on into HFC. With a bill payer loan, you could be making just one payment that could be less than the total you're making now. HFC, an equal opportunity lender. Come on in. 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 Finance. 
where people use our money to get the most out of life. At Household Finance, you may borrow up to $2,500 and choose from a wide variety of repayment loans. For a large or small loan, call HFC in New York, New Jersey, or Connecticut. See your phone book for the Household Finance office nearest you. We're going now to the seventh inning. And the New York Mets have made a change in right field. It's Mike Vail. Mike Vail has come into the ball game in place of Ed Greenfield in right field now for the New York Mets. Larry Bittner will lead it off for the Chicago Cubs. The answer to the baseball quiz, the last pitcher in the Major League to strike out four batters in one inning, Bill Bonham, who started here today for the Cubs. Bonham struck out four Expos in one inning. There's a swing and a high pop by Pittner. It's out toward short, retreating the outfield grass and flipping the glasses, but Harrelson, he makes the catch. So there is one away. That'll bring up Bobby Mercer. Mercer has been up twice, and twice he's gone out to right field. And how, you ask, is it possible to strike out four batters in one inning? Well, in one of them, the catcher drops the ball. And the runner arrives safely at first base after the drop third strike. And so he's still alive, although a strikeout is credited to the pitcher. So he does it to the succeeding batter, and he's got four. Now the pitch to Mercer, and it's swung on and hit foul on the right field line, racing over his veil, but it's going to be back in the seats out of play. 0-1, oh, the count to Bobby Mercer with one man out, nobody on, and the Mets leading by a score of 3 to nothing as the Cubs bat in the top of the seventh inning. Final game of a three-game series and getaway game of the homestand. That's a fly to St. Louis at the conclusion of this game, and the Cubs will go home to Wrigley Field in Chicago. That pitch is outside. <laughs> one and one, not a Mercer. Deaver again into the motion. Deals the pitch. Swung on. Foul on the ground. Back of first base. Back of Alvin Dark to coach it first. Alvin Dark, one-time field captain of the New York Giants. And they played at the polo ground. Before that, he was a shortstop for the Boston Braves. And they played at Braves Field on the River Charles in Boston. Here's a one-two. Hit deep to right. A foul ball pulling again. Count holds at one and two on Mercer as he has been getting around and pulling the ball. The bottom of the sixth inning, Montreal is leading the Phillies one nothing. Wayne Twitchell against Steve Rogers. The Phillies have had a tough time getting off this year. They've won only one and they have dropped five. And the bottom of the fifth inning, the Pittsburgh Pirates are leading the Cardinals by a score four to two. Jerry Royce against John Denny. Simmons hit his second over the year in the second with nobody on for the Cardinals. Sears curveball is low. Two two. In the fifth inning, it is Houston three and Atlanta one. James Rodney Richard one and zero against knuckleballer Phil Necro and two. Cliff Johnson hit his third home of the year in the third with nobody on for Houston. Two two pitch to Mercer and it is swung out and missed. Seaver struck him out. Strikeout number five for the Met right-hander Tom Seaver. Two Cubs are out here in the seventh. Another ring of Jerry Morales struck out and grounded out. The Los Angeles Dodgers are playing the Giants in the latest started candlestick in San Francisco. Cincinnati Reds are at San Diego, and it's going to be Pat Zachary 0-1 against Bob Shirley 1-0. Scores in the National League right here. The Mets are leading the Cubs 3-0. Tom Seaver now kicks and fires. Fastball down the pipe. Cold strike to Morales. It's 0-1. We'll bring you radio coverage tomorrow night from St. Louis, Missouri at 8.30 p.m. New York time. Here's the 0-1. Swung on and popped up. Foul back to first, but Kingman may have a play. He's in the warning track, shading his eyes, and Kingman makes the shot.
swung on and popped up foul back to first, but Kingman may have a play. He's in the warning track, shading his eyes, and Kingman makes the count. Side is retired, one, two, three, nothing across. And in the middle of the seventh inning, the score is that's three and the cosmetic. Hey, you're looking for something fun to do with your family or friends? We recommend the baseball game right here at Shea Stadium in New York. In these days of skyrocketing costs, a ticket to a Mets game is still the best entertainment buy around. For your convenience, the Mets have over 200 locations in the greater New York area where tickets may be purchased in advance for any Mets game at Shea Stadium during the 1977 season. Among the ticket locations, the advanced ticket window at Shea, the Mets ticket office at the Grand Central Terminal, 197 branches of the manufacturer's Hannibal Trust Company, and again this year, 10 Abraham and Strauss stores. Shea's advanced ticket window is open from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. on weekdays, from 9 to 5 on Saturdays and Sundays. The Grand Central location in front of the Vanderbilt Avenue ramp on 42nd Street is open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. on weekdays, from 8.30 to 4 on Saturdays. Tickets may be purchased at the 10 A&S stores Monday through Saturday from 9.45 a.m. to 6 p.m. and at Manufacturer's Hannibal Branch's weekdays between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Box seats cost $5.450. Reserve seats are $4.50 and $3.50. Tickets are also available by mail. Address all orders to the Mets ticket manager, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York, zip code 11368. And enclose an extra 25 cents to cover the cost of postage and of handling. Roy Steger is up to lead it off for the Mets as they bat here in the bottom of the seventh. Jim Todd on the mound. Dips into the motion. Kicks and fires. The pitch is low and away for a ball. It's 1-0. Oh. Steger has grounded out and flied out. He's gone 0 for 2 this afternoon. Now again, Jim Todd with the pitch. Swung on it on the ground to third. On a Barris. Can handle it. Picks it up now. And the gas throws. And he's safe at first base. On a Barris bobbled it. Retrieved it. Threw low to first. It was short out by Bittner, but Steger was there. Scored as an error on Otaveras. An error charged against the third baseman. Bud Harrison's coming up now. The number eight man in the order has grounded out and flied out. The Mets have three runs on five hits. Cubs have no runs. They've had only one hit off Seaver. Seaver is himself coming out to the on-deck circle now. Bittner holds against the runner, Roy Steger. Leads off the bag at first. Onaveras moves up onto the grass at third base. Here's the pitch to Harrelson. Throwing it on the ground. Pass up off his glove out into right field. Steger's on his way to third. Mercer charges the ball over, runs it. Steger's safe at third. Harrelson's on at first. Steger at third. Harrelson at first. It is an error. Charged against Bittner at first base. That'll bring up Seaver, who has been up twice, gone hitless so far today. That ball was pulled by Harrelson, batting left on the ground, off the glove of Bittner, and on out the right. It was overrun briefly by Mercer, who would have had no play anyway. Seaver looks down to Tom Burgess to see if anything is on. Nobody out. Infield in for the Chicago Cubs. Carl Mitterwall goes to the mound for a word with his pitcher. Jim Todd. That's a brief conference. Here comes Mitterwall back behind the plate. Steve Swisher was the catcher for Chicago on opening day, but there were collisions at home plate. First, Dave Kingman, then Tom Seaver, and Swisher went out of action with a bruised shoulder. He's all right now, but Cub manager Herman Franks doesn't want to break up a winning combination, but has been. In essence, a winning combination in the early season, so he has left Middlewall behind the plate. All right, runners lead, first and third. Here's a pitch to Seaver, and it's right across the letters. Drives him back at ball one. One and zero to Tom Seaver. You'll recall that last inning, Dave Kingman was hit by a pitch ball. Now Seaver is back in. Jim Todd sets up. The pitch is down the pipe for a call strike. It's one and one.
You may recall an interchange between these two teams back in 1969 in a big series. Cubs came in here to Shea, and Tommy Agee was flattened by the Cub pitcher. To be a 1-1 pitch with the infield in. Foul off and out of play. Jerry Kuzman was pitching for the Mets, and when the field captain of the Cubs came up, Ron Sando, Kuzman hit him squarely on the wrist. Retribution. Things are never quite the same again. As the Mets breeze past the Cubs and on to the National League pennant and sent to the World Championship. One and two, the count out of Stever. Runners lead first and third. Pitch is swung on and missed, struck him out. Stever tried to check it, but he took a swing. Runners hold first and third, and Lee Mazzilli's coming up. Mazzilli's two for three. There are a great many members of Lee Mazzilli's family here on uh, deck today, and they are situated in a section squarely behind home plate. He's a switch hitter batting left. Joe Frazier's up on the steps of the dugout, and he uh, is arguing with Andy Olson, the umpire behind the plate, and Olson steps a step or two over toward the dugout, says a word, then says to Jim Todd, let me look at the ball. He does and tosses it back to Todd. Now Mazzilli is back up there. Med runners lead at first and third. The Mets are leading in the game by a score of three to nothing as they bat here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Todd sets up off the stretch and deals a pitch and is low for a ball. It's 1-0. Oh. Roy Steger, the runner at third. Bud Harrelson, the runner at first. Middlewall again calls time. Goes out for a word with Jim Todd. They're having a little communication problem here. Here comes Frazier out of the dugout. He wants a word with the umpire. Andy Olson is walking over to meet him halfway now. Frazier wants a word with Andy Olson. It has something to do with what Todd is doing out there on the mound. Now Frazier's pointing toward the mound. Olson again turns and points toward the dugout and is walking out now to see Todd. Here comes Herman Frank. He wants to know what this is all about. Olson has to look at the baseball. Herman Frank's out there now talking to Olson. Todd still has the ball, and Andy Olson is looking into the dugout of the New York Mets. It's only conjecture. We have no way of knowing for sure what they're talking about. One would guess that it has something to do with a charge possibly on behalf of the Mets manager that Jim Todd is loading up the baseball. In any case, we're ready to go. Runners at first and third. This will be a 1-0 pitch to Mazzilli. Go to third base. No, no, no. It doesn't come off. It doesn't come off. He takes the stride. And it's the old pickoff play where you fake the throw to third and then pick the runner at first, whom you hope will be a spectator by that time. Here's a swing and a ground ball to first. Bittner has it now. He's going to the plate. And at the plate, he's safe. Ball rolls away. Stega scores. Littlewell retrieves it. Runners at first and second. So the Mets are leading by a score of four to nothing. Ball was hit directly at Bittner. At first base, he came up with it. Fired it to the plate where Stega hit the dirt. And he hit Middlewall at the same time. The ball rolled away after hitting the glove of Middlewall. The Mets pick up their fourth run. Their runners at first and second. So that'll bring up Felix Mion. Official score says fielder's choice. Error on the throw. Charge against Bittner. No RBI. Here's a swing and a ground ball to the right side. It's taken by Bittner. He goes over to Yvonne de Jesus who drops the ball and the bases are loaded. Yvonne de Jesus covering at second dropped the ball. And the bases are loaded. It was a ground ball wide of the bag at first. Bittner went for it. Decided he'd go for a possible 3-6-3. Three, three. Fired it out to Yvonne de Jesus who was going to come off the bag outside. With Millon sliding in, 
or rather Mazzilli sliding in. And instead, in that maneuver, he dropped the ball. An error charged against Ivanda Jesus. Four errors have been charged against the Cubs here in the bottom of the seventh inning. And Bruce Beauclair is up now. The bases are loaded. Still only one man out for the Mets who are leading 4-0. Off the stretch, Todd pitch is in there for a call strike. It's on one. Bud Harrelson is the runner at third base. Lee Mazzilli is at second. Felix Millan is at first. Now again, Jim Todd sets it up. Here's the pitch. And it's low for a ball. One ball and one strike. Mets have not had a hit in this inning. But they've scored a run and have the bases loaded. Four errors committed by the Cubs. Inside low, skipping rope to get out of the way, Bruce Beauclair. Two and one to count to him. Dave Kingman is on deck. In case you've joined us along the way, Kingman had a two-run homer in the bottom of the third inning. Beauclair with a wide stance at the plate now. Todd will work off the stretch with a 2-1 delivery, and it's on the way. Laying off Beauclair. He swung his body, didn't pull the trigger. 3-1, and one, it's outside. Three balls and a strike. Bases loaded. Runners take their leads all around. Here's Todd with the 3-1. Hit in the air to left field. Moving over his Morales. He can't get it. Here comes Harrelson and just behind him, Mazzilli. The relay is not made and two runs are in. Runners at first and second. Ivanda Jesus took the ball, did not relay it anywhere. So it's a single and two runs batted in and the Mets are leading six to nothing. It was an opposite field single off the bat of the left-hand batting Bruce Beauclair. Morales moved toward the line, could not field it on the fly, took it on a hop, flipped it back into Ivanda Jesus. Harrelson had held up at third to see if the ball could be caught. Mazzilli had not held up and was just behind him, and Kingman is coming up. in and waiting. Med runners take their leads at first and second. Here's Todd Fitch. Swung on and fouled off. It's strike one. Kingman slides to right. Had a two-run homer and was hit by a pitch ball. Cubs have committed four errors in this inning. If you're wondering about the record for errors in an inning, it is six by the Pittsburgh Pirates in 1903. Now again, Jim Todd sets up. Breaks the pitch low. And it's 1-1. One, one. That record surprises me. I would have thought back in 1962 that our beloved Mets had some innings in which they had six or seven errors. Here's a 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on it on the ground. He's short. Ivanda Jesus up. Goes to 3-0 for one. The third of first double play. So it goes 6-4-3 to retire the side. New York Mets picked up three runs. On only one hit, there were four errors and one left. And at the end of seven, the score is Mets six and the Cubs nothing. Do you realize how many of you out there have questions about your federal government for which you just can't seem to find the answers? What's the minimum wage? Can I go camping in a national park? How do I register a trademark? Do I need a visa to travel to the Boca does the government require life jackets on boats? The answers to questions like these are easier to find than you may realize. Your local federal information center is staffed by people who can either answer your questions or direct you to the proper government office where you can get assistance. The Federal Information Center provides a vital link between you and your government. We're listed in the phone book under U.S. Government. 
No question is too complicated or too simple. So remember us, your federal information center. Our job is to help you get the answer. Tom Seaver is working on a one-hitter here as the Cubs come up in the top of the eighth inning, and Steve Ontiveros will lead it off. He's had a walk and a base hit. He's a switch hitter batting left today against Seaver, who has struck out five and walked two. The only hit that the Cubs have had today was a single by Ontiveros in the top of the fifth inning. The lights are being turned on here now at Shade. Through seven innings of play, the Mets six runs, six hits, no errors, and the Cubs no runs, one hit, four errors. Seaver's pitch is swung on and missed. It's strike one. Oh, and one. George Mitterwall is next in the batting order for the Chicago Cubs. Seaver again goes to work, and the pitch is low for a ball. It's one and one. Good crowd on hand this first Sunday afternoon of the season at Shea. Be a double hitter here next Sunday, the Mets and the Pirates. That's high and tight for a ball. Two and one. And the two one offering. A little tight. Three and one to Adaveras. Seaver takes the sign. Deals 3-1. Low walking. Lead off walk. That's the third walk issued by Seaver. Middle wall is coming up. Middle wall bats right. Seaver takes the sign, checks the runner back over his shoulder, and steps off. Seaver's shutout of St. Louis here on opening day of the home season was his 40th shut out of his career. That is in for a call strike. Seaver has struck out 200 or more batters in nine consecutive seasons, something that no other pitcher in the history of the game has ever done. That's the pitch in for a call strike. It's a hard slider, 0-2. Oh Last year, Seaver led the National League in strikeouts for the fifth time in his career. Here's the 0-2. Swung on and popped up foul. Back and out of play. 0-2, oh the continuing count. Steve is walking down to the infield grass now, rubbing up the ball as he goes. Seaver has never had a no-hitter. No Met pitcher has ever had a no-hitter. Here's the 0-2 pitch, and it is outside. But it was against the Chicago Cubs that he had his near-perfect game back in 1969. Jimmy Qualls had a ninth-inning single with one man out. Swing the ground ball is short. Harrelson has it now. Over to me on. There's one to throw to first. And there's two. A big stretch by Kingman at first, aiding the double play that goes 6-4-3. Two men out. And Manny Trio will be coming up. The paid attendance this Sunday afternoon is 35,337. 35,337. Total in the ballpark, 36,066. Trio is the number eight man in the order. The Cubs are batting here in the bottom of the eighth. The Mets are leading 6 nothing, and here's Seaver's pitch. Low for a ball. It's 1-0. and Despite the fact that no Met pitcher has ever pitched a no-hitter, veteran Met catcher Jerry Grody has caught one. Here's a 1-0 pitch. Low for a ball. He was not with the Mets at the time. Grody came to the Mets. From the Houston Astros, cold 45s, they were called early. 
Here's the 2 0. -oh. And it is low. And in 1964, in April, Ken Johnson of Houston pitched a no hitter against Cincinnati. He lost it. 1 0. But Grody caught it. That's in for a called strike. 3 and 1 now to Trio. Seaver today has struck out five and he's walked three. That's in for a called strike. It's three and two. This will be a payoff pitch. And it's on the way. High walked it. Fourth walk issued by Seaver. Puts Trio on. And will bring up the number nine man in the order who is Joe Wallace. He came out as a pinch hitter and stayed in the game in the sixth inning. Ray Sadecki is up and throwing in the med bullpen. Ray Sadecki. You know, one of the great things about the city of New York is the public transportation is such that if you decide in the early morning you want to go to the ballpark, it's no problem. Inside from all there are cities, Los Angeles, for instance, where if you decide you want to go to the ball game, you better decide a little early because it's a long way and it's not easy to get there. The point I'm making is that there was a gate sale here at Shea Stadium today of over 20,000. Over 20,000 people came to the ballpark, bought their tickets, and have enjoyed the ball game this afternoon. 1 0, oh, the count now to Joe Wallace. Inside for a ball. It's 2 0. Oh. is back in. 2-0 pitch. And for a call strike there. Cities like Atlanta, for instance, where the gate sale is very small over the course of the season because they draw on a wide geographical area where so many people drive from neighboring cities and states, for that matter. There's a swing and a foul ball off and out of play. 2-1. Two men out, runner at first. Mets are leading by a score of 6 0. Craig Swan against Bob Forsch tomorrow night in St. Louis. Seaver has the side, sets checks back over his shoulder. Swung on, and it drifts up to the corner and right if it stays fair, but it is pulling and is a foul ball off the wall on the fly in the right field corner. Mike Vail retrieves it and plays it back. It is a long foul ball. We pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. You'll go three for four with me, Ted Brown, weekday afternoons from 4 to 8 p.m. only on 1130 WNEW New York. We put a lot of life in your world. This is Lindsey Nelson with Ralph Cantor and Bob Murphy at Chase Stadium in New York. The Mets are leading the Cubs 6 0, a 2 2 count to Wallace, and here's a check swing foul ball back and out of play. Count holds 2 2. In his career, Tom Seaver has had four one hitters, and he has had six two hitters, but never a no hitter. Ken Seaver sets and deals. In there for a call, strike three. Strike out number six. The side is retired. There were two walks and one left, and in the middle of the eighth, the score is the Mets six and the Cubbies nothing. consistency starts with country pure water heading for the Schaefer Brewery in Lehigh Valley. There's Schaefer's Coison Brew. That's brewing twice. For over 130 years, it's given Schaefer a smooth, crisp, consistently great taste. Schaefer consistency. Put it to the test. You'll find your last one tastes as good as your first. Beer after beer, the same great taste of Schaefer. Your last one always tastes as good as your first. Schaefer Brewing Company, Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. And now the Mets.
Mets are coming up in the eighth inning, and it's going to be Mike Vail up for his first time in the ball game. He came on in relief of Ed Cranville as a defensive move. Vail has been up three times this year and had one hit, so he's won three. Boston Red Sox knocked off the Cleveland Indians 4-1 in the first game of a doubleheader. Reggie Cleveland got the win for Boston. Now Fitz Morris was the loser. Andre Thornton hit a home in the first in the third with nobody on. Swinging a ground ball to short. Ivan De Jesus over to Larry Bittner and Vail on one pitch as ground is out. That'll bring up John Stern. Something always confusing when Reggie Cleveland pitches for Boston against the Cleveland Indians. It's always a great temptation to say that Reggie Boston defeated Cleveland or something like that. Stern. In and waiting, and here is Jim Todd with the pitch. And it's in there for a call strike. 0 and 1. Sadecki continues to throw in the Met bullpen. Here's the 0 1. Outside. 1 1. And a 1 1 pitch. Low and away for a ball. 2 and 1. It's a swing and a drive in the left field for a base hit for John Stern. Picked up by Jerry Morales and played back. Stern checks a wide turn and holds it first. A one-out single to left and Roy Steger will be the batter. Roy Steger. That will be back here next weekend. First night game of the season at Shea on Friday night against the Pirates. Saturday afternoon, a doubleheader next Sunday. The weather has been fantastic for the home season so far. Go to first. I must confess there were days last January when I wasn't sure they still made weather like this. But Todd looks in to pick up the sign from George Mitterwall. And here's a pitch that is in there for a called strike. On one. Todd again off the stretch. And it's low. 1-1. One, one. Harrelson is next in the Met batting order. The New Yorker sixth and the Chicago and nothing. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on and it's a base hit in the left field. Morales comes up, feels it on the grass, holding a second his Stearns and Stager's on. Single the left runners at first and second. Bud Harrelson will be the batter now, the number eight man in the order. He was on on an error by Bittner in the seventh inning. Paul Russell is up and throwing, and Willie Hernandez is throwing. A right-hander and a left-hander in the bullpen for Chicago. Jim Todd now with the pitch. Swung on and fouled off. Back in the 30s, if you took a Major League Baseball team into Chicago to play the Cubs, you're going to get pitchers like Lon Warnicky and Pat Malone and Guy Bush, and it was tough. Runners lead at first and second. Here's the 0-1, and it's outside for a ball. 1-1. Pitchers in those days were not hesitant to use the knockdown pitch. This will be a 1-1 delivery. And it's outside for a ball. 2-1. Matter of fact, you might get knocked down just for taking a good cut. Not for especially hitting the ball. 2-1 the count to Bud Harrell. Swinging a foul ball off to the left side out of play. And it's evened out now at 2-2. Seaver is in the on deck circle, kneeling there now. Jim Todd sets up. Fouled off and out of play. When 
former ball players get together, they love to discuss the old days. When former anything get together, they like to discuss the old days. A couple of days ago, we were listening to Lou Boudreau and Eddie Lopat discuss how it used to be. Here's a swing and a miss, and Harrison with a chopping swing. It struck out, hitting down on the ball, except he didn't hit the ball. Second strike out for Todd Seavers coming up. Two men out, two men on. See, there was this time. The low pad was pitching against the Cleveland Indians, and Lou Boudreau was the boy manager. And he had been in a question and answer session, morning of the ball game. Pitch to Seaver. In there for a call strike. One of the youngsters has said, what about the hidden ball play? And Lou Boudreau said, there's no such thing anymore in the majors. You've got a coach there. Runners are alert. So there is no hidden ball play anymore. It'll be an 0-1 pitch. It's high. And so with the score tied 1-1 in the eighth inning, Lou Boudreau triple. Got up and brushed himself off. Bill McKegney was the coach at third. Said, um, you know, stay close now and tag up. Lopez was standing a few feet behind the rubber. And Boudreau started to take his lead. Here's a 1-1 pitch. Swung on here on the ground to shortstop. Taken by Ivan de Jesus. He goes to second for the fourth that retires the side. Finished the story. Tony Cusinello was playing third base, and he said to Boudreau, look what I got. He had the baseball. It was the hidden ball play. Boudreau was out. Side is retired here. There were two hits, and there was one left. And at the end of eight, the score is the Mets six and the Cubs nothing. <laughs> hundred years, HSC has tried to bring you the best service possible, to be friendly, fast, and convenient, and we're usually just around the corner. And if there's ever any way we can improve ourselves, just let us know. Come on in, come on in, come on in, there ain't just HSC, an equal opportunity lender. People use our money to get the most out of life. Come on in to At Household Finance, you may borrow up to $2,500 and choose from a wide variety of repayment loans. For a large or small loan, call HFC in New York, New Jersey, or Connecticut. See your phone book for the Household Finance office nearest you. And now, the Chicago Cubs will come up here in the top of the ninth inning with Tom Seaver trying to nail down a shutout on a one-hitter. It'll be the top of the batting order. Yvonne De Jesus up to lead it off for the Cubs. De Jesus has struck out, walked, and flied to right. The Mets six runs, eight hits, and the Cubs no runs, one hit. Seaver has struck out six and walked four. Pitch is on the way. High and tight for a ball across the letters. It's one and all. Seaver deals. Low for a ball. He's gone behind two and all. Ivan de Jesus backs out for a moment. Greg Gross has moved out on deck to bat for Jim Todd. Here's the 2-0. And it's high for a ball. That's in for a call strike. Three and one. Now, Greg Gross swinging in the on-deck circle. And the 3-1. Right in there for a call strike, too. Sadecki continues to throw in the Met bullpen. This is a payoff pitch to Ivan de Jesus. And it's swung on line back to Seaver. Knocks it down. Plays the first in time. A line shot directly at the left foot of Seaver. He got the glove down inches off the ground. Knocked it down. Picked it up and played the first. Greg Gross batting for Jim Todd with one man out. Your attention, players. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Gross has been up twice this year with one hit, so he's batting 500. He's a left-hand batter, formerly of the Houston Astros. Deaver now with the pitch to the left-hand batter, and it is in there for a called strike, 0-1. is the 0-1 delivery way outside it's 1-1 one, one. nobody on base here's the 1-1 one, one. curveball it's high 2-1 two Tuesday night in St. Louis it'll be Jerry Kuzman going against Pete Falcone here's the 2 one Swung on and hit in the air down the left field line. A foul ball out of play. Way back. Two and two the count. Now to Greg Gross. Wednesday afternoon, John Matlack goes to the Mets against Eric Rasmussen of the St. Louis Cardinals. Then the Mets come home. They have Thursday off and play the Pirates Friday night. Two-two delivery. Hit on the ground to first, and down on one knee, Kingman as it jogs to the back, two away. Two men out, nobody on base. The Cubs are down to their last out of the day, and Larry Bittner is coming up. He has gone 0 for 3 this afternoon. Bittner is a left-hand batter. Receiver's pitch. Swung on and foul back. Strike one. And the old one. Breaks in there a little tight. So it's one ball and one strike. Bittner stays right in the batter's box. Two men out, nobody on. Seaver's pitch. Swung on and missed. Case a bad pitch. One and two to Bittner. Bittner still outside the batter's box. Carefully comes back in. Measures his stance. Seaver looks to John Stearns for the side. Dips into the motion. The one-two delivery. And it's it on the ground to short. Harrelson has it across to Kingman. And the game is over. And that's him. What it is. Seaver has a one-hitter. Tom Seaver with a one-hit shutout. And he's getting congratulations all around. A superb job by the Mets' right-handers. The Mets have taken two of three from the Chicago Cup. In the ninth inning, nothing across. We'll be back in a moment with a final summary in totals. Right now, the final score of the game is the Mets six and the Cubs nothing. You ask for it, you got it, Toyota. Forty Celica GT lift back with a gutsy five-phase overdrive transmission. You can't ask for it. You got it. the Toyota Celica GT lift back because all the extras I wanted, like an AM FM stereo radio, reclining bucket seats, steel belted radial tires, tachometer, and power front disc brakes were included in the price of the car. <laughs> you, ask for it, you got it, Toyota. I asked for a sporty car that my wife, Marcia, would think was a practical car. And I asked for a practical car that my husband would think was a sporty car. You asked for... Shut out for the Met right-hander. As Seaver was in control all the way, had a one-hitter. He gave up a single to Steve Onaveris in the fifth inning, and that was the only hit that the Chicago Cubs were able to manage off him.